Hi, this is Kevin from the Mathsaurus, and in this video I'm going to give you a tour of my desk setup for productive and engaging online teaching in 2021. And the setup I'm showing you today is exactly the one that I've used to make my new online course Go for Gold in the Junior Maths Challenge, a course aimed at students in year 7 and 8, or exceptionally in, uh, good students in year 6, uh, to help them prepare for the Junior Maths Challenge. So do take a look at that course if you're interested, and I'll be putting out some other online courses over the coming year as well, so sign up for the mailing list if you want to hear about those. Now I put out a video around this time last year, just before the UK went into its first lockdown, about all of the tools and software that I've been using in the past for online teaching with students over the last four or five years. This time last year I felt like a bit of an expert in online teaching because I'd been teaching online for a number of years before the pandemic and one year later um, it seems like for not the best reasons almost everyone uh, who's teaching in the UK has also now become an expert in online teaching and I hope that the video I put out last year was of use to some people as they were trying to get started. I've also been teaching a lot online over the last year mostly in private tuition and uh, I've been trying out all sorts of different setups both for my online teaching and for making YouTube videos uh, about mathematics. So I thought I would give you a tour of all of the different uh, tools I've tried. I've got a lot of different things here on my desk and I'm going to talk about some of the pros and cons of each and how you can use each of them for different types of lessons or perhaps if you want to make online video tutorials like the ones I've got here on my Mathsaurus YouTube channel then you can see exactly how I do that as well. So I hope this will be a useful insight into the pros and cons of the different methods of recording tutorials and videos and doing video lessons with your students. Obviously there's a huge range of budgets here as well. I've invested a lot over the last year in different bits of kit that I've enjoyed uh, trying out and so I hope that you'll be able to uh, make a good choice uh, based on all of the options that I'm going to show you here. On a basic level, teaching online doesn't have to be expensive and so actually the number one thing that has really transformed my teaching is probably the cheapest thing that I've got on my desk here which is this uh, Smattery fle flexible clamp and uh, you can see uh, all it is, it's just a clamp and it's got various attachments on the end. Um, look, this was a different attachment to hold my uh, phone in place. Uh, the basic one is just uh, something that you can, you know, attach any sort of uh, webcam to and I'll show you how uh, I've got one here that's uh, got an attachment to put my uh, Logitech webcam in it if I want to. At the moment it's sitting on my uh, desktop, but you can just really quickly and flexibly move these around. And this has been great for uh, getting still shots for videos, for um, you know mounting a proper camera on there to record uh, the desk, and it just gives you this flexibility. I have a student where I have lessons sometimes and I just have my phone mounted like this where we have a physical call whilst uh, teaching using some online whiteboard software because her connection isn't always uh, as stable and so uh, this is a really great simple solution. Solutions for online teaching don't have to require enormous amounts of expense uh, or sophisticated setup. But if you are keen for a certain effect, there are lots of things that you can buy that can be really useful uh, in that teaching. Just before we start this video, I'd like to say that none of the content in this video is sponsored by any of the brands that I'm talking about today. I'm just talking about products that I've used and that I uh, genuinely recommend and I'll be very honest with my pros and cons about these. I will put links to as many of these products as I can find in the description below so you can find them easily if you do want to buy them and try them out. Now at some point when we're teaching maths it becomes really important to get what we're writing onto the screen and also sometimes to get what the student is writing onto the screen. And there's various options for doing this. The option that I've had for the longest time and that I still keep coming back to is this uh, Wacom uh, interest tablet. This tablet allows you to write with the Wacom pen here on the tablet and then what you're writing just appears on the screen. So you can use that with any uh, online whiteboard. I use bit paper a lot at the moment uh, but you can also just use it with something like OneNote or even paint you know in a shared uh, screen on a zoom call or something. And there are fancier versions available where rather than uh, writing on something like this you actually get a, a sort of an extra monitor on here that are much more expensive. It does take a couple of hours to get used to writing on this properly but once you have and once you're used to just coordinating writing on here and on the screen this is really great. This one is a slightly larger version it's a little bit more expensive but I started out with a much smaller version of this and although I do think the Wacom tablets are the best on the market there are a range of alternatives at lower prices that many people have told me uh, they think are almost as good. 
So you don't have to spend very much on these, you know, the cheapest ones of the smaller versions of these can start at £50 and you're getting into a couple of hundred if you want something that's a bit larger and of the better quality brands. Now an alternative way to get what you're writing onto the screen is to actually have a webcam uh, that looks directly at your desk and probably the most serious option that I've got for you here is this. This is the um, IPVO uh, VZR and you can see this is a very sturdy uh, piece of kit and you can really um, move the camera very flexibly here and you can put whatever you want under here. So you can just be writing and the student can see literally what you're writing underneath there. You know, it makes it very easy just to grab a book as well and to share that content very naturally. You can use this as a document scanner uh, as well to, uh, to scan things in and snap them and send them to the student very quickly and easily as well. And now this one is kind of at the premium end of the market and actually Many years ago, I bought this one. This is the IPVO Ziggy. So, um, and this has actually been a really, really good product. It's a much cheaper version. And you can see there is one problem with mine, which is that over time, the um, it's just become very inflexible. But if you buy the newest versions of these, they're actually fitted with a, a screw so that you can, um, so you can tighten that easily. That was one of the flaws of the original version. But actually, you know, this, uh, when it came out, I think was really the market leader and really, improved my lessons no end and lasted quite a long time. This lasted a good few years before it started uh, loosening uh, and as I say the newer ones are even better still. So that's also a good option. And actually the basic functionality of these two if you've got them on your desk is more or less the same. They use the same piece of IPVO software. They're really basically both just cameras that are looking uh, at the screen here. I think there is now a version of this one that comes with Wi-Fi or you can get a cheaper one that doesn't that just connects via the USB and Really, for all I've ever needed for this, I've just connected it with a USB directly to the computer and it's worked perfectly well. So you could just use a piece of kit that you've got already. And I've got here the Logitech Stream Cam. You can see it's usually sitting on top of one of my monitors here. Um, and the nice thing about this camera is it's really easy just to take out uh, of its mount and then I can put it into the other mount here that comes provided. And then I can just really easily attach it uh, onto one of these Smartree uh, bendy clamps and I can just attach that anywhere on my desk and I can turn that straight away into something that will record what's on my desk. Um, I'd probably want to have it the other way around and pull the wire out uh, over in this direction. Mine are a bit tangled, but you can see this is a really flexible tool. And again, again, if you just want to go back to uh, your usual um, chat setup, you can have that done in a few seconds and you can just go between those in a single lesson. So that's a really good uh, option there. What else do I have on my desk? Well, I usually have a couple of physical calculators sitting around here. I've made another video about what I think are the best calculators for school math that I'll link below. Here we've got the Casio FX991EX and I've got an emulator of that that I often put up on the screen uh, in lessons to show to students directly as well. And the Casio uh, CG50, the uh, graphical calculator option there, which is a uh, good fun for further math students, but by no means essential, especially teaching online. Most of the time I use online tools rather than using this calculator, you can use things like Desmos, Wolfram Alpha, other things like that. Um, I've, I'm not going to go through those things again, but uh, go back to my first Teaching Maths Online video and I've gone through a few of the uh, best, I think, online tools and that hasn't really changed. So one thing I'd perhaps add into the software that I really like using is Bitpaper, something that I've discovered uh, this year. And they've made a really great uh, online whiteboard where you can have video calls in the whiteboard or you can have a Zoom call and just have the whiteboard up in a browser. Everything runs in a web browser, so it's uh, pretty compatible uh, and pretty easy to set up without any extra software and students can access it um, easily from a variety of, of locations. And it's something that I've, I've found mostly just really works. It, you can drag in mathematical shapes, you can even type in LaTeX uh, if you know how to do that to get equations in nice and easily if you want it formatted nicely, but most of the time I just use it to write pen on paper and to communicate clearly with the student. And if the student also has a tablet, they can be writing on that shared whiteboard at the same time, or, a lot, or some of my students have also just got pretty good at using the mouse to write on there as well, and I'll fill in the more difficult things whilst perhaps they write on a piece of paper. Again, that's the other thing really, okay, it's nice if your student also has a tablet to write on as well, but we can really get by uh, in these lessons easily enough by uh, them writing a little bit with the mouse, me uh, filling in some of the details of what them, they're saying, and when they do their homework, just taking a picture of a, 
of a physical piece of paper and sending it via email. The one thing that I've invested in this year as well is slightly better lighting. And actually for this particular video, I haven't got it set up in the usual way. Um, so my lighting isn't quite optimal in this video because uh, I've set it up so that it's great for when I'm sitting at my desk. One thing I've learned through experimenting with this is that you can go for better quality cameras and webcams, but if you haven't got the lighting set up, it's not really worth it. So actually, I'm not really quite getting the best of the Sony's MV1 in this uh, video um, because I haven't optimized my lighting. And as long as you've got a reasonable webcam, the best thing you can do to improve the quality of a call, or especially if you're recording a video uh, to put up on YouTube or something, is just to improve in lighting. So I've invested in this newer studio light that I can just um, turn on and off and I can really easily change the lighting level in the background here and you can see you know even with my suboptimal setting it's a lot worse with the light off compared to with the light on for sure and I've got a, I've got various smaller lights around my desk uh, as well here and then if you want to go one step up as well you could perhaps think about getting a better microphone a standalone microphone so I used to use the blue snowball a lot and that was an excellent microphone I recently upgraded to this the NT USB uh, studio microphone this is really uh, exceptionally good uh, quality and to be honest much more than I need the blue snowball was perfectly adequate but I didn't like that it uh, got in the way on my desk a little bit whereas this one I can attach very easily to a uh, to a clamp like this and the quality is to be fair uh, a little bit better as well and you could use that for other purposes if you wanted to too but in fact a lot of the a lot of the newer webcams come with perfectly adequate microphones and you know the logi stream cam that i've got there is perfectly good for uh its microphone as well and more than you need uh, if you're having uh webcam classes and calls and even for recording content on youtube i record a lot of my videos just um, through that microphone sometimes if I don't want to bother with a more complicated setup. Another thing I've got here is a laser printer so if I actually want to just print something out easily maybe a piece of work a student sent me that I want to look at and mark with a pen on paper or if I just want to have something alongside me whilst I'm teaching I can just grab that really easily here. Again not too expensive to get a home laser printer if you want one although you do have to keep buying cartridges as they run out. And perhaps the most important thing on my whole desk here, a nice scented candle. So if a lesson is getting too much for you and you're uh, getting frustrated with a student, you can calm yourself down in a moment, light a candle and go back to your tranquil, uh, calm uh, teaching mode and uh, have a nice rest of the lesson. I've also got a range of sort of physical whiteboards, a couple of little ones and a big one on the wall that I sometimes use for uh, recording content with a camera over it or uh, I've done a couple of videos at the board on the wall although I don't use that very often I usually use that just for my own notes and keeping a note of uh, what I'm doing with students and with my other work and things like that as well. As you can see here I've also got a dual monitor setup and that's incredibly useful uh, for online teaching it's something that I really wouldn't go without anymore because you can have the student on one screen and you can have like your online whiteboard software on another screen and or you can have uh, the whiteboard on one screen and you can have other resources on the other screen so I'm all the time having PDFs open and you know whilst a student is thinking about a problem I might be grabbing the next question from my other screen then I can copy and paste that in again you can get around that with a bit of planning or just by sharing a window rather than sharing your whole screen you can do the same thing but it's something that really helps me keep calm and organized during online lessons Another product that I've tried this year and I really like, and again, this is not a sponsored video at all, um, is the new Remarkable 2. Now this is not something, this is not something that's easy to attach to the computer for an online lesson like, a, uh, like an input device. It's uh, just a uh, pen on paper uh, tablet uh, where you can write quite naturally on it uh, and it's like a physical pencil and it's great for taking notes, for storing uh, ideas. It's really good at handling PDF documents and I use this a lot now instead of paper so rather if I am writing with a desk cam set up I'll put that on the table and write on that instead of uh, using a physical piece of paper usually. It is black and white that's perhaps the only downside of it here but if you want to get away from the screen a bit I've been really impressed with that. I've had it for a couple of months now and it's really changed the way that I work. I used to have paper all over this desk and it was pretty disorganized and now I barely use any paper at all. 
One thing I can't show you so easily in this video because I'm filming on it right now is the Sony ZV-1. Perhaps I should say ZV-1 because I'm not American, but I think it's meant to be ZV-1, who knows. Um, but I will put some uh, video of it uh, in amongst the film here. And that's really been my biggest purchase of the year. And I have to say I did buy it partly with the intention of making YouTube videos. And you can see I've made a couple of videos on the channel. One walking around this uh, beautiful city that I live in here of Bath Spa looking for mathematical things and it's a fantastic uh, camera really for uh, vlogging and for taking great film. It's pretty good at taking uh, still pictures as well, at least for an amateur like me. It gives some really, really good results without too much tweaking of setup and settings and things. You can do all of that stuff with it, but out of the box it really does very well. The built-in microphone is a very good quality, although I have upgraded to uh, an additional Rode microphone on there. And with a couple of uh, additional things here, I've attached this uh, small rig um, rig to it, which has a bit of an extra grip, but mostly allows you to get over a couple of the slightly annoying features of the uh, ZV-1 uh, to do with, uh, it means that you can access the battery compartment um, very easily, and you can attach more than one thing here. So I've got it with a, a light on top and a microphone underneath. Uh, so that's really high-end stuff. If you want to make really good quality content for YouTube or for an online course or something, then uh, this can be a great option. But to be honest, the quality that most people play YouTube videos at isn't really high enough to get the benefits of this. This can shoot in you know, fantastic 4K quality, uh, but that's really not necessary for YouTube at the moment. And especially for making maths content, I think you can do perfectly well in HD and in fact, uh, you know, for most of my videos, I don't really use this for my usual tutorial and teaching videos. I'll only get this out if I'm doing something a bit special or if I'm doing a piece where I'm talking to camera for an extended period of time like this. So I hope this video has been useful to you. Obviously, a lot of people have been forced into online teaching when they didn't really want to because of the pandemic. But I think people are learning a lot this year about uh, things that they're going to take forward beyond the pandemic when we get into the back into the classroom as well. Things I think at some point will go more back to normal, but everyone this year has learned all these skills. They've seen some of the possibilities for the content that they can produce for students uh, electronically and online. We don't want to be in online classrooms the whole time, but if we can make the odd video here and there to help our students, if we can use video content to enhance the classroom, then that has got to be good. I'm really against, by the way, putting too much extra demand on teachers in this respect I hope we can do it in a way that reduces the burden you know once we've made all this content you know over the over the last year so much content has been made and if we can find a way to organize the best of that and to get that out there for the benefit of students then hopefully we can make something good out of this uh, online teaching experiment um, I'm really interested to hear what you've been doing if you've got any tips or extra bits of kit that you think that I've missed out please do put that in the comments below and we can all help each other out and help each other make the best decisions. So please do give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if this has been useful. Uh, check out my previous video on teaching online from last year uh, if you want to see some of the software and things that I use as well. And do take a look at the Mathsaurus website and consider recommending some of these videos to your students. I've got content that really covers all of uh, GCSE maths and an increasing amount of A-level and other things. So I hope that's useful to you and to them. And I think the only thing to add to this really is to say, uh, wherever you're watching this from, please do stay safe. Remember as well that teaching during the pandemic is not going to be perfect. When we're experimenting with new technologies, things are gonna go wrong. We're gonna have slip ups. And it's true in the, in the classroom without technology as well. You know, lessons are not perfect, things go wrong. So if things haven't quite worked out for you uh, this year and you've been finding it difficult, know that there are a lot of people in that position as well. Even after so much practice with all of this kit and setup, I still have the odd lesson where everything just breaks and things disconnect and uh, something doesn't work. So um, so you're not alone. Uh, I do hope this is useful to you though. And so stay safe and good luck with your teaching this year. And I'll see you soon.